I'm Gene Liu and I'm an otolaryngologist, head and neck surgeon, or ear, nose, and throat doctor here in Los Angeles. And I wanted today to talk about tonsillectomy and give you a little overview of what it's like to take out the tonsils. Taking out the tonsils is still one of the most common procedures that's done in the United States every year, so chances are you've heard from some family or friends how tough it can be. But if you have enough problems from the tonsils, it probably makes sense to take them out. The most common reasons to take out tonsils center around either infections or obstructive symptoms or blockage type issues. From an infection standpoint, it can mean that you're getting a lot of episodes of tonsillitis where they're getting swollen and red and drippy over and over and over again. If you have enough of those episodes, it might make sense to take them out. Sometimes we take it out for chronic or severe infections. So even if you only have one or two episodes, if they're bad enough, if they last long enough, certainly if you get an abscess, it might make sense to take them out as well. Some of the obstructive reasons where we may take out the tonsils are for obstructive sleep apnea, which chops up your sleep and gives you poor sleep quality, swallowing problems where you're gasping or choking or having trouble getting things down, speech issues where it's very muffled and hard to, under and hard to understand, then those are all reasons from an obstructive standpoint that we may take out tonsils. Chronic mouth breathing can also lead to changes in jaw and facial development. So in kids, sometimes we're doing it to prevent growth and development issues of the jaws. Some more rare reasons to take out the tonsils would be for tonsil stones or for a lump or mass and a concern for cancer. Ultimately, the surgery itself is pretty easy. It only takes 10 or 15 minutes, but you've got to be completely asleep. It is the back of your throat. It is kind of sensitive. And for people who are wide awake, it's just too gaggy and sensitive. So once you're asleep under general anesthesia, though, it's a pretty straightforward process that takes 10 or 15 minutes. We reach in the back of the throat when we peel the tonsil out from the muscle that's underneath. Once that's done, you've got an open raw area in the back of your throat that needs to heal. Most people who get their tonsils out get to go home the same day. But for small children under three years old, or for people who have bad enough sleep apnea and sleep issues, they may need to stay overnight. Once you get home, the main issue that people deal with is a sore throat and trouble swallowing. Generations of kids have gotten through with popsicles and ice cream because cold things that melt can be soothing, help with swelling, but it's also the easiest thing to swallow. Within a few days, you get to soft foods like mashed potatoes and grits that are at room temperature, and then to semi-solids like mac and cheese that are slightly lukewarm. Eventually, you get back to solid foods that are hot like hamburgers or pasta. Ultimately, though, it might take you three weeks to get back to Doritos. In general, there's enough pain and discomfort that people are taking Tylenol and Motrin around the clock that first week. You're marching it out usually in a six hour cycle. So if you're taking Tylenol every six, Motrin every six, and you alternate them, you're taking something every three hours. So if, for example, Tylenol at noon, Motrin at three, Tylenol at six, Motrin at nine. The older you are, the more likely you are to also need a narcotic like morphine on top of that. If you end up taking a narcotic, that's fine but it's on its own schedule and doesn't replace the Tylenol or Motrin. Most people are able to dramatically taper down on the pain medications after the first week. Because of the pain and discomfort and trouble swallowing and trouble sleeping for that first week, almost everyone is home from school or work. The second week, most people are able to go back as long as there's not significant strenuous physical activity. So for children, this may mean no swimming, no trampolines, no PE. For adults, this means no sports, no working out, no swinging sledgehammers, no doing construction. But if what you have is a desk job or you're going to school and sitting at circle time, that's fine. Whether you go back to school or work that second week is up to you. In general, as long as you're not doing anything really strenuous from a physical activity standpoint, it's fine. That having been said, we all know people that can't function when they're a little bit sick or under the weather and other people who are able to power through everything. Medically, it's safe to go back. Whether you feel up to it is a different story. For children, that first week is very tough. It's going to test all of your parenting skills and patience to get through the process, but you will get through it. The more you stay ahead of the pain, the better. The more you force liquids and stay hydrated, the better. It actually doesn't matter if you can eat anything for a whole week or so. You might lose a little bit of weight, but medically you're going to be fine. The most critical thing, though, is that you're able to get liquids down and stay hydrated. That's going to be crucial to your successful recovery. Most patients worry about the pain. Most doctors worry about the bleeding risk. 
So once you've taken out the tonsils and you have the open raw areas that are trying to heal, during that healing process, the scabs can fall off and you can start coughing and spitting up blood. Thankfully, it's pretty rare. It only happens about 3% of the time. When it happens, it can be any time from the moment you hit the recovery room all the way through a two week healing process. Once you've hit that two week mark, the bleeding risk is gone. But during those two weeks, we don't want you to be on an airplane, on a boat, or camping in the middle of nowhere. We basically just want you somewhat near civilization and on the ground and near healthcare should anything happen. Most of the time, if you start coughing and spitting up something red, it's going to be mild and just little flecks of blood in your spit or your phlegm. If that's the case, sucking on some ice chips or popsicle or gargling with ice water may get it to stop. The risk where the bleeding is significant enough where we need to reach back in there and cauterize or put in a stitch is only about 1%. In older children and adults, we can generally do that in the office. In freaked out little kids, or even anxious adults who may perhaps have a very sensitive gag reflex, might need to go back to sleep in the operating room under anesthesia for 5 minutes just to get in the back of the throat. The likelihood where you bleed enough where you get a transfusion is less than 1 in a thousand. It's not high at all, but it's not zero. Almost always in children, they're completely recovered in 2 weeks. For quite a few adults, it can take 3 full weeks to be completely recovered. I know it sounds like a rough recovery, and it is, but everybody gets through it okay. If the reasons that you're going to consider taking out the tonsils is bad enough, then another way to think about it is packing in all of your future suffering from the tonsils into those two or three weeks, biting the bullet, getting it over with, and moving on with the rest of your life. One last note, we almost always take out the adenoids when somebody's getting their tonsils out. Adenoids are very similar to tonsils but live behind the nose in what we call the nasopharynx. If you think about the area where you're drinking a soda, you laugh and it squirts around the back, that's where the adenoids live. Because you can't see them easily by just opening your mouth in the office, people a lot of times forget or don't even know that they're there. But taking out the adenoids is a super quick and easy procedure. And if you're going through a tonsillectomy, and if you have any adenoid tissue at all, we pretty much always take it out at the same time. I hope this gave you some useful information about what the tonsils are and when we would take them out. If you have any additional questions, please leave it in the comments below. Additionally, if you want more information about kids and surgery, the bleeding risk, the post-op diet and the post-op pain control, I do have other videos that go into each one of these in more detail in my channel.